for me, I typically sell two types of artwork online. The first type are funny or just kind of goofy designs, and they're not considered high art at all. I make no claims about that. The second type of artwork that I typically sell is what I consider to be higher end art. And what I mean by that is they could be landscapes or models, but they're basically pictures that are serious. And the idea here is that somebody's buying that because they connect with the person or whatever image or genre is showcased in the art. So in this example, I'm gonna be showing you how to do tattoo designs. And it is something that I've had some success with over the years. Now in the, my video here, I'm gonna be using a Raiders logo, which is absolutely trademarked. I do not recommend you use it. But the reason I'm using it is two reasons. One, it's all black with a little bit of white in there. So you can see how whites and blacks work. The second reason is that it's really identifiable. And so you know what the Raiders logo looks like, or at least you can look it up very easily. And so you can then compare to what's going on in the video. I just didn't want to pick a random image that you'd never seen before. So let's get started here. I'm in Affinity Photo, and I'm just going to create my template here, which is 11 inches by 17 inches. And then from here, I'm going to go File and Place. And we can see here I've got a couple models selected and the Raiders logo as well. I'm going to start off with Hunky Guy here on the bed and he's hanging out with the lady. And is she loving this guy because he's a Raiders fan? Hmm, well let's find out. Okay, so now next up I'm going to select the logo. So I'm going to go File Place and I'm going to pick the Raiders logo. And then I'm just going to put shit in to the design about the size of a back tattoo, right? So. Again, Raiders fans are now drooling because half-naked ladies all over him. And so this does not look very good, right? Because it's just a logo and we wanted to make it look like an actual tattoo. And of course, what that means is it would need to be somewhat see-through. So the easy way to do this is you select the item and then over on the right-hand side, there's the opacity and then there's this little drop-down menu that says normal, dark, and multiply. What I would encourage you to do is just go through each of the options under this normal. So go to darken, you can see how it changes, got rid of all the whites, you can go to multiply, it's a little bit, I think, better. There's also color, linear burn, there's a whole bunch of different options and some of them are pretty radical. So I'm gonna go to multiply I'm going to select that. What that does is it removes the white from the logo and makes it look a little more like it's a see-through tattoo. It still keeps the gray, which is what I wanted. The other thing I'm going to do as well is I'm going to monkey around here with the opacity. So when I click on the opacity, I can either type in 50% or I could also use the slider button as well. I could make it more or less. Now I'm actually going to make it really, really light. And the reason I want to do that is because the next stage is I need to cut out some of the logo because the lady's hand is over top of the logo. At least it should be. So on the left hand side, I'm going to select a little eraser tool. Now I've got a pretty big eraser there. I want to make sure that I go smaller. So I'm going to use the slider down on the top left hand side there, make it a bit smaller. And now I can simply crop it out. I'm going to zoom right in and I'm zooming by using the control button and the mouse wheel. So now I just want to crop out the hand. I'm going to make sure for my eraser that I've got my opacity set to 100 and I've got my hardness set to 100. What will happen if your hardness is at zero is when you start erasing it won't have a hard line on it. So it looks very fuzzy. So what I want to do now is go to hardness is 100. I'm going to make it just a tiny bit bigger. And now I'm going to go in and start doing my erasing. So I'm just going to move along the hand and I'm just dragging along. Now I want to give you a little tip here if you're doing erasing. If you've got a long stretch like what I'm doing here and if you make a mistake, whoops, I went outside the finger, right? Now if you do undo, so you can go edit, undo or just control Z, it erases all of it. So if you're really nervous, if you're getting along the end of this long trail, so here I am doing erasing. Oh, I just went outside the lines there. So here I am doing the erasing. If I get to the end and it's like a really long stretch, just stop clicking the mouse, just let up. And that locks in now what you've done. That's a completed transaction. So now you can continue along. So if I'm doing really high end design work, where I'm erasing something and it's taking me a long time, I'm actually not dragging the mouse, I'm actually clicking the mouse repeatedly to make it very, very fine tuned. I would also zoom in like sometimes like this much as well. So you can go right along. So instead of just dragging, you may just want to click. It'll look really weird when you're zoomed in, especially if you're on 200 or 300 or more. But as you move along, we can see now when we zoom out, it actually looks pretty decent. 
So this is why I usually work in larger palettes like 11 by 17 inches and so on. Okay, so now we've got the lady's hand, looks good. And I'm gonna move now the Raiders logo back to 100% just to see what it looks like. Now see how dark it is? I'm not a big fan of that for a tattoo. Most tattoos are somewhat faded. So I'm gonna go down to about 75%. And again, this is artwork, so it doesn't have to be like literally true. But the idea there would be now we've got a logo or any design. Again, I'm just using the Raiders logo because it's easy to recognize and it was easy to work with. It's white and black and now Raiders fans rejoice, naked ladies jumping all over them on the bed. For the next example, we're gonna use a different model. I'm gonna go file in place and I'm gonna pick a model who happens to have a bare back but it's on an angle. So it's like, uh-oh, what do we do now, right? Because if we put the logo down there, file in place, if I put the Raiders logo on her like that, not gonna look that great because it's like, hmm, she's on an angle. Okay, so what are we gonna do about that? So I'm gonna put the logo down just like that. I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna go normal and then multiply. And then what we wanna do now is rotate this image somehow, okay? So we're gonna go up here to the filters at the top and we're gonna go filter, distort. And we've got a couple different options we can use. The first one I'm gonna use is called shear. And from there, I can move these little nubbies around, and you can also move this entire shear box around if it's in the way. Sometimes it pops up right over top of that logo. So you can now modify it so that it's on somewhat of an angle. I'll click apply, and then now the Raiders logo is somewhat skewed. It's not good enough because I want the Raiders logo to be along her back. So I'm going to go to filters and distort, and I'm gonna to go to the perspective option. Now from here, I can change this to single plane or dual plane, single plane just means that it's gonna be working off of one axis, and then the destination and source, we're just gonna leave it at destination, and I'm gonna show the grid. Now what I can do is I can actually move this around as if I were rotating it. See how I can rotate it like that? How cool is that? So I'm gonna just monkey around with it just by kind of dragging it around, and I'm going to try to make it so that this design is somewhat stuck on her back in such a way that it actually looks like the perspective is similar to an actual tattoo. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna click the apply button. And again, I, because this is just one example, I wanna be clear, you'd wanna like monkey around with this and play around in Affinity Photo with these different tools. This is just one image, one example, one angle. What I would encourage you to do is really just go wild with it and just see what it does. And that's pretty cool too. Okay, so for erasing, what I recommend you do is zoom in as much as possible, get right over to the edge, and then realistically, what you wanna do is just sort of move along and take it out piece by piece. Now you can see how chunky it is along the side. So what I would actually recommend is the opposite of what I did in the first one. So I'm gonna just redo this and I'm actually gonna change the hardness now down to zero. And when I do that, it actually fades it out. So you could actually go right along and paint right up to the side of the tattoo. Now this, again, you, it may look really different when you're up close, but when you go away, again, you gotta be really slow and methodical about this, but this, because, I'm just gonna zoom out here, you can't really tell when you look away, and it looks like it's light hitting it, as opposed to you're actually erasing it. So again, this is just an option. I'm not saying this is gonna work every single time, but as I paint right into the back, I now have more leeway and it's way softer than doing a hard erase. And it gives a nice ethereal quality to that tattoo along the right hand side. So I think that looks really nice. So now when I zoom back, it's virtually impossible to tell that that's not a real tattoo. Her back is not something that you would pick out as saying this has been erased. It just looks like it's merging into some sunlight. So again, Raiders fans rejoice. We've got Bikini Lady here who's ready to go to the football game. I hope you found that helpful. I really enjoy doing tattoo designs. You can use anything. You could use places, flags are a big one. You could use design, the Mona Lisa, whatever it is you like. And you can pick stock images from places like Unsplash and Pexels, for example. Those are commercial free. I hope you found this video helpful. Feel free to throw me a comment down below or ask a question, I'd love to hear from you. And here's another video on how you can supercharge your affinity photo journey.